Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making it square. So today we're picking up where we left off in our flatness video uh, from last week. Now uh, flatness and squareness or perpendicularity is maybe a more technical way of putting it are very closely related. So we talked about kind of the justifications for uh, you know making sure that everything is flat and square last week but suffice it to say that anytime you want to make really good knives everything's got to be flat everything's got to be square. So if you didn't catch last week's video about flatness, I highly recommend that you watch that one before you watch this one. Uh, perpendicularity is all based on flatness. So uh, the more you know about how to get things flat, the better off you're going to be in terms of accomplishing what we're talking about in this video. All right, let's jump on into it. There are two main areas basically unrelated. The first is squaring the edges of stock and the second is drilling perpendicular holes. I've got other videos that cover a lot of that information, so I'm gonna cover that towards the end of this video and maybe not in quite as much detail. Lots of things in the knife shop that you're gonna to wanna to have squared off. One common situation is that we saw something, say with a hacksaw or a bandsaw, and then need to establish edges that are easier to clamp in a vise. Another common reason for needing square surfaces is to mate handle materials in multi-part handles, bolsters for instance. If the edges aren't both square and straight, you'll leave gaps between the surfaces, so we'll talk about both of those things. The trick here is first, you need to start with a nice flat surface as your main plane. In other words, if you haven't got your A surface, that might be say the back side, dead flat. Then it's going to rock around and your B surface, that's this one here that you're actually trying to square up, well, that'll end up getting messed up too. So no matter what method you use, start by making sure that you've got your original surface dead flat. A couple of quick notes before we go further. First, you won't saw your way into joy in knife making. The tolerances in knife making are just too fine, so you have to take other approaches. You can rough things out with saws, but you're always going to have to go further. Obviously, now there are mills and CNC machines and surface grinders and so on, equipment that costs a lot of money. But we're not getting into that here. We're looking more at beginning and hobbyist approaches. So let's look at sandpaper first. So let's say that we know that this surface on our piece is nice and flat. Also, we've got a nice flat base to work off of. Like we said in the previous video, you don't have to have a machinist surface plate to abuse like we're doing here. A piece of glass, aluminum, micarta, a plastic cutting board, the top surface of a table saw. I mean, you can just find endless numbers of nice flat materials that'll serve as a base for further work. While I'm on the subject, let me take a second to talk about surface plates. Surface plates are intended for use by machinists as measuring reference surfaces. They're manufactured to various levels of precision, all of which go well beyond the level that would concern a beginning knife maker. The largest, most expensive, and most precise models are really beautiful tools and they're just crazy expensive. You would never in a million years want to put abrasives on them like I'm doing here because you'll wear them out, throw them out of tolerance, and you're wasting all the money you spent on them. But this is a 12 inch class B tool room model that I didn't pay much for. I'm reasonably careful about how I use it, but I don't rely on it for critical measurements. So if it gets bunged up or worn out of spec, it's no great loss to humanity. So anyway, now we need a second surface that's dead square to that original flat surface or base. Now you can fiddle around with your machinist square and clamps and stuff trying to make some secondary surface nice and perpendicular. And depending on how square you need it to be, that may work great but here's a foolproof approach. This is a one, two, three block. They're used by machinists to fixture things on machine tools. 
You can buy super cheap Chinese models online that work fine for the kind of thing we're doing here. In fact, you know, just as a footnote to this, I kind of own two categories of machinist's equipment. I have things that are made to machinist tolerances, but they're kind of low quality, they're not super expensive, and if I screw them up, I don't care. And then I have other things that if I really want the high quality stuff, those are the ones I'm going to go to, and I'm, I'm much more careful about how I use them so that they don't get fouled up. Anyway, in this case, you can buy these super cheap Chinese models online that work just fine for the sort of thing we're doing here. Here's just one among a zillion setups that you could make. You can tape your sandpaper on there, use a little bit of spray adhesive, however you want to do it. And now we'll just scrub away with our bolster material and pretty soon we'll have a nice perpendicular surface. This can then be mated with the handle scale, which you'll do the same thing to, and you'll have a great joint there. Now, incidentally, I'm showing this with one, two, three blocks, but by no means is this the only square item that'll do the job. The world of machinists tools is full of square items. You can buy very small surface plates and stack one onto another, just all kinds of things. And of course, there are plenty of very square manufactured items that aren't purpose built for establishing perpendicular working surfaces, but that will be just fine for a situation like this. So you can clamp up all kinds of random material and establish nice perpendicular working surfaces with them. You don't have to have these machinist quality things to do this, so be imaginative and you'll find a way. Now in most situations, you'll also want to elevate the piece that you're squaring at least by a small amount. A piece of scrap micarta, plastic, or sheet metal will do the job. You just have to make sure that it's as flat and parallel as your base surface. Now this has the side benefit of avoiding scraping up your base, whatever that might be. Hey guys, let me jump in quickly to mention that if you're enjoying these videos, I hope you'll help the channel on Patreon. Click the card or follow the link down here to see how it works. Now I try to make a wide range of videos so that no matter where you are in your knife making journey, I've got something that's going to help you. Now some of these are complicated projects and some use really simple tools and techniques and some, like this one, are aimed at building your base of skills and your knowledge. Now one of the things you'll notice about my videos is that you get plenty of detailed close-ups, all kinds of different angles to see what you're doing, um, you know, good lighting, and let me tell you, if you've done any video, you'll know that this takes just lots and lots of time. That's time that I take away from my family, from making knives, from doing other things that put food on my table. So if you want more videos like this, as well as access to plans of many of my projects, Help yourself out by helping the channel. Thanks, and now let's get back to work. While we're on the subject of establishing perpendicularity, as we referenced in the flatness video, you always need measuring devices for checking your work and your setups. And there's nothing better for squaring than, well, a square. I'm repeating myself from the earlier video, but the machinist square is a cheap tool for verifying that what you think is square is actually square. Machinist squares like this are much more useful than carpenter's squares. It's not just that they're more accurately made, but they're really set up for small work in a way that carpenter's squares are not. You can use it just like a rule, place it against surfaces you're checking, see if light passes between the square and whatever you're trying to check. There are just a lot of things you can do with them. You can get fairly cheap ones, and they'll do the job for this kind of work. Maybe you need to take off a little more material than sandpaper will allow. You can attach a file or even a rasp to your parallel. Now this may not be quite as perfect as if you're using an abrasive, but it might give you a good point for establishing something, say that you've sawed, and then you can work from that filed surface into abrasives, and that'll give you your final surface. So let me talk quickly about drilling here. I've got several videos devoted exclusively to drilling technique, so I'm not going to go too deep here. No pun intended. First though, why is it important to drill holes perpendicularly when making knives? For fixed blades, it helps you put pins into the handle predictably so that the holes go exactly where you want them, you can line them up on both sides and get them to look good, but even more importantly, 
the more perfect the holes are, the more that everything is going to fit up properly and you're not going to end up with gaps. If your holes are cockeyed, it's pretty common to have trouble lining them up so that your handle will fit correctly. And of course, it's completely critical with folding knives for a variety of reasons. The most obvious of which is that if your pivot hole isn't perpendicular, the blade won't seat or pivot properly. Anyway, I'm not going to talk too much about the technique of drilling here because I've got several videos that I've already covered that in, but I will talk a little about gear. The best single investment you'll ever make in a knife making shop is a drill press. In terms of overall usefulness, it's right up there with a belt grinder and the bang for your buck is just really unparalleled. If you don't have a drill press, you'll need to make or buy some kind of drill guide. But honestly, if you're too financially constrained to buy a drill press, you're going to find it a real struggle to make knives, period. You can buy a brand new bench top drill press for a hundred bucks or so at the low end, and you can find much more sturdy and powerful used floor models for a couple hundred bucks on Craigslist. If you want to go up the ladder and spend a lot more than that, of course you can, but you don't have to in order to get a press that's going to work really well for you. I mentioned drill presses because the single best thing you can do to assure the perpendicularity of holes is to use a drill press instead of a hand drill. Now beyond that, a drill vise is incredibly handy. You can find ultra cheap Chinese models like this one for 25 bucks or so online. Now look, they kind of suck, but even a crummy drill vise is way better than just trying to clamp your work to the table of your drill press. If you go the budget route, of course, just verify the first few times that you use it with your squares to make sure that the various elements are dead flat and that they're nice and parallel to the table on your drill press. So a couple things to note about drill vices. If you plunk down the hundreds and hundreds of dollars to buy a high quality machinist's vise like this Kurt, you can just throw things in there and expect them to be pretty parallel to the table. It's not just because they're high quality machines, but the geometry of the internal portions of the jaws makes it so that they won't move around. But for El Cheapos like this one, some important qualifications. First, right out of the box, like I said, use your trusty machinist square to verify that the thing's perpendicular to your drill spindle and that it's parallel to your table. But once you get beyond that, be aware that when you tighten the vise, the slop in the vise will always and forever cause the movable jaw of the vise to kick up slightly, throwing your work out of parallel. So you need to whack it back down with a mallet, seat it on the bottom of the vise, or use some kind of nice parallel standoff. Even with much higher quality tool makers vices like these, you still have a tiny amount of play in the jaw. So never rely completely on a vise to make things parallel. You always want to check. Tool makers vices like this can be pretty handy, but unfortunately you have to spend some pretty serious money to get the really good ones. These Chinese ones, even at a hundred bucks or so, tend to have kind of crappy internals that bend and then screws that strip and things like that. I mean, they're better than nothing, but in this case, you really do get what you pay for. Now, using abrasives by hand like this is okay, but on the whole, a disc grinder is better. Again, we've kind of seen the general outlines of how they work in the previous video. Anyway, first, always check with your trusty machinist square to make sure that the grinder table is actually square to the abrasive surface, the disc itself. Most of these are adjustable, and even just banging on them sometimes can knock them out of square. So always got to check, but there's more to it. The thing that's easy to do is to rock the piece a little back and forth. And instead of a square line, you have a nice perpendicular arc. It's perpendicular to your back surface, your A surface, if we want to call it that. But the line itself is curved and that's no good either. So many disc grinders have little fences or miter gauges that allow you to set the work at a particular angle. Now here's another little trick. Let's say you don't have one of the little miter gauges. Using your machinist square, you can set up a ruler on the table, just tape it down, set it exactly to 90 degrees, and then you can use it to index your piece, just like you would use the miter gauge. Now you can do all the same things on the table of your belt grinder. 
disc grinders work better, but if you don't have one, the belt grinder will suffice for smaller items like bolsters. Again, don't assume that perpendicularity is perfect with your table always check. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you're uh, able to achieve real high levels of uh, flatness and perpendicularity and so forth in the knives that you're making, uh, it's really just going to move your, your knives to a, a much higher level. All right, thanks guys, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!